Hello, well continuing my shoemaking project in this video I'm going to be fitting the rand and the shank. And the rand is a strip of leather which goes around here and a shank is like a stiffener. Now I have already made a start on this so I can show you what we're aiming for. That's the rand, it's like a horseshoe bit of leather and it becomes the new like joiner where the sole and the heel will be joining onto the back here. So what I'm going to do, I've shaped this one and nailed it down. I'll show you how I do that with the other one and then I'll be using wooden pegs to firmly fix it down. The shank is a stiffener. They can be metal or wood. I'm using a wooden one on these and they give a bit of stiffness going from the heel uh, down to sort of further down in the shoe and sort of stop it collapsing. So they keep it stiff there, the shoe will flex more here and it gives it a bit of firmness and a bit of body. All of this area is going to get filled in in time with leather and cork and then the outsole will go on over the top. But anyway, I'll show you first of all how I shape this rand. So the rand is made from the same strip of leather that we had for doing the weld. It's the same thickness, the same width. So this is very roughly 3.5 mil russet veg tan and it's 15 millimeters wide. So what I will do, I'll just cut off a bit and then trim it. And the first thing I need to do is basically to get this bit of leather to go around the heel here, I need to wet it so I can stretch it to go around. Some people cut little channels in and make it go around that way. I find with this, if I wet it, I can get it to go around the curve. So again, I'm just using ordinary water in a garden sprayer. And I'm just gonna soak this bit of leather. I'll soak it from both sides on the flesh side of reverse. It's coated with something so it's not quite so amenable but it does still take the water if I keep at it and I don't again want this absolutely drenched I just want it wet enough that it gets fairly soaked but not dripping if you know what I mean. It takes a while so I let that settle in I'll give it another two or three sprays and it should get it dark all over, which is what I want. So this has soaked through quite nicely now. Just looks darker in colour and it will make it far more easy to manipulate it. So what I'm going to do is basically just try and do just that. I'm trying to make a horseshoe. Now one would only really succeed with this if one turns it and forces it to a horseshoe shape at every sort of bit. If you just try and do it in the centre, you won't get, and that's a mistake I think a lot of people make when they're trying to wet mould, they just do one bit of it and it won't do it. You'll just end up with like a rainbow, um, not a proper, you know, heel shape. <laughs> but if you do it at every point to get that curve as small and as tight as you can, so what you're trying to do is compress it on the inside and stretch it on the outside, you will find that you will get a horseshoe type shape. And it's surprising how you really can manipulate it when it's wet to quite a large extent. You see, look, if I put this on here now, you can already see that I'm beginning to get there. So just keep working it, be patient. You're trying to stretch the outer and trying to compress the inner and do it at every point and it will form a curve. So taking it round both ways and you just want a little bit of movement on each piece and it will come round. So if I look at this now it is getting closer to where I want it to be. It's not there yet, I need to keep going. I want to get it all perfectly flat. 
So this rand, it's the first sort of foundation for the heel really. And it's going to be pegged to the uh, midsole here using wooden pegs to secure it in place. And I'll show you how I do the pegging. But I have somewhere some little wooden pegs which I'll be hammering in. And here is just as an example in a bit of bridle leather. That is a wooden peg that I've hammered in just to test it out. So it's quite good, you see. There's leather work and woodwork combined. <laughs> That's the way I like to look at it. So I'm still, as you can see, working this round. It takes a little while. It is getting there now, actually. But just do it at every available piece and it will gradually come round. If I put this on the shoe now, I think you'll see what I mean. Let's have a go. So it needs to line up with the welt and that's nearly there now. I just need to do a little bit more so I can get it slightly flatter. This is where there's a balance really with the width of your welt. I feel if anything, I've got this welt a tad narrower than I might choose, but if you obviously get it too um, wide, you'll find it more difficult to get round curves. So it is all having to sort of hit a balance with all this sort of thing. Well, I reckon that's probably okay. I'm gonna to start to place this into position. So again, I've got my top grain facing upwards, I've got my flesh side facing down to the ground. And there's not much sticking out when one does this. So I'm going to get it roughly into position and then I will mark it with a pen, just where I want to trim it. So there's like a scythe here. So I'll just mark the top of that. So I'm just trimming the first part. It's a little overlap joint here. I think that's going to be all right. Just need to take that back a bit more. So that will rest on there. And that will get moved along. I'm going to just make that a slightly more gradual sky fair. So that lines up with that. Begin to bring it in slightly. This will come round. So it will go something like that. It's sort of lining up on the outside broadly. That will then come round there and come down here. And I want it trimmed roughly about there. So there it is, I have my trimmed like horseshoe. As I started this side, I will just tack it down and get it into position. I find these uh, pincers, lasting pliers, very good. They're like continental ones, but they're, um, they've got their hammers on the sides here. But what's nice for welting you can grip the welt and get it brought into shape if you don't have a welt beater. It's quite useful, quite like them. So I'm just popping some tacks in so I can get this into position and then it can dry out. But I want it obviously to be in the right shape. 
I'll do the same down this end. Got my overlap and I'll just get it into position. Let's press it all down, get it roughly to shape. So that is my grand all in position. Now the other thing I want to do is to put a shank in, a stiffener. And that will sit roughly from halfway to the back of the heel and then come forward to stiffen up this part of the shoe underneath the arch in effect. And I'm just going to glue that down and put some tacks in position. So like on this one to hold it into position. When this is dried, I'll be able to then put the pegs in. So I'll be gluing it down and putting the wooden pegs in and I'll show you that when I, this is dried. Ditto for this one, I'll let it dry overnight. Then I'll be able to show you the next step. Well, I'm just roughing up the base where I'm going to be applying glue. So I want it to grip well and a bit of roughing up will help it all grip. So I'm just using an ordinary cobbler file for this. And I'll do the same to my rand that I've made. But I do want to just rough up the inner side a bit. Again, I'm just going around with the file and getting it a bit rougher. So I just get within a, about three millimeters of the outer edge. So I'm going to apply some glue to both surfaces. It'll be contact adhesive. I'm then going to let that cure just for a few minutes. And then I will apply them, hammer them together and then drive some wooden pegs in. I've got a pegging awl here. So this is a fairly stubby pegging awl, which you push in and it pierces the leather, makes a hole. And then I can insert one of these shoe pegs. So they're little wooden pegs, like a point on them. And these are what were traditionally used and still are used a bit today, but they're not so easy to get hold of now. Used to be whole factories churning out little wooden pegs like this. And um, it also became quite a cottage industry as well in the shoe trade. So certainly, you know, around about the 1820s or thereabouts, there would have been lots of these sorts of things being made on the sort of earlier shoes. So they still are used by shoemakers but just not so common today. I've got some quite interesting tools as well, um, as well as obviously the, the pegging awl. I've got um, a couple of cutting knives for cutting the pegs off and also a big boot rasp. So actually here's my boot rasp, which is a, a rasp we can go inside the shoe to sort of flatten off the pegs and um, it's got a cutting end, this end, which I've got under wraps at the moment. Anyway, I'll get on with this. So I'm using a bit of a stronger, smellier glue on this one. So the Aquilum 315 that I normally use by Rainier is completely water soluble and everything. This one is a bit more of a stinky one, but I'm um, probably a bit stronger as well. So it's Rainier Calder Colun. Comes with a brush, which is pretty useful. Well, within five minutes, this glue has gone off to tack consistency, so I can 
join, and I have to be careful of my placing here, but I can join it and then hammer it in. So, um, do this partly by feel and partly by eye line. I'm fairly happy with that. Just making sure it's joining up nicely. Then I just make sure it gets nicely punched down. I'll give that another lot of blows in a minute. Let's do a final check on position. Now I'll get some pegs in. Press quite hard and quite firm with this. And I'm going to put a bit of glue on the pegs. I'm just going to put a bit of white glue in as I do those. It will partly lubricate the peg going down and also hold it when it does go down. my first peg in I'll trim them off I've just broken that one off that's fine I'm not worried about breaking them off I just want to get them in firmly before anything shifts so next one pressing down hard and just giving enough space get the next one down do a little bit of glue on it don't need much glue it's really is just enough to lubricate its journey down if I'm quick and make it hold fair. These pegs will be crashing into the last underneath. So I don't want too much glue going down, otherwise I won't get the last out. Again, that's gone down. Just smashed the top off, but again, I'm not worried. So I'll carry on going round here, I'm popping more pegs in. Pegs are actually um, lemon wood, so it's quite a strong wood. Some people use birch. I have got a stack of firewood outside and I did think that shelter would just be cutting my own. Quite satisfying tapping them in. So what I'm going to be doing is having basically a whole row of pegs coming around. The idea of the pegs is partly also you could use nails but if they come through obviously it's far worse having a nail hit your foot than a peg but the other reason actually is that if it were to get wet here um, the pegs will expand with dampness and they'll hold in better. They won't fall out with walking as easily as metal fittings will. So that's sort of one of the reasons that they're used traditionally. It's a more superior way of doing it. So I'll put a row of pegs in now around here. I've just smashed them off using a peg breaker, which is, this is an old boot peg breaker tool, so it's long enough to get down into a boot. And it's got the cutter for cutting off or beheading the pegs, if you like, at one end, and then the other end, it's like a rasp. And um, you can get smaller ones of these, which obviously are probably more suited for shoes, but um, this does a job, and it just then folds the tops of the pegs off. But it's 
obviously you don't need one of these you can just use a rasp shoe um you know the ordinary cobbler's rasp because there's perfectly good access here and it's quite good fun using the old tools and obviously if you're trying to get down inside a boot and something like this becomes quite useful but it's interesting you see you'll see these tools and people don't know what they are what they're for you know you see them on ebay and this one it was just listed as unknown tool i i saw it and obviously immediately thought ah oh, that's a peg you know breaker come rasp so i um, thought yeah that'd be a bit of fun <laughs> add that to a little collection but it, it is interesting i think all this sort of craft it's getting lost and it's really great for the likes of youtube you've got people posting videos um, of you know elements of it i mean obviously far more expert than i am on shoes but it's nice to see people doing it and letting us all you know understand a bit more how it works and i've been getting actually an awful lot of good advice out of some of the old books and just to say one in particular it's um how to bottom a welted shoe by hand and is actually declared as anonymous it's one of these reprinted books the actual author i think was west yeah frank l west so you can get this it's possibly on google books even but i mean it was very very cheap off amazon i think it was something like two pound fifty or something it was not a lot but that's been useful it's a bit rudimentary and you have to sort of guess what the diagrams are saying in places but i found that very useful and then the other key one i've been referring to is actually a book to help you appreciate nice quality shoes handmade shoes for men and um it's looking at vast shoes in particular but it's got some fantastic illustrations in here which are really you know they say a picture tells a thousand words well you can certainly see looking at the pictures some of these processes that one's doing and think oh does mine look like that have I got it quite right so I have found this really useful I mean obviously with something like this it's pretty complex and in many respects you just go on a course but it's quite good fun um, given I'm in lockdown to actually have a go at something like this and see what I can do so there you are that's my first one done I've obviously got one more to go but that's glued and pegged so that's quite a nice good sturdy foundation so that's the rand done I'll do the other one and then I'll be doing some filling in so filling in with bits of leather here and then a bit of cork etc down the front end here for flexibility so stiffness at the heel flexibility under the sort of footbed there is the way it's done but anyway that's gone okay so I've just been packing around my shank with some fairly firm veg tan leather what I'm going to do next is just fill in some of these gaps so that this shank can't move around and then I will be putting another like layer of veg tan leather over the top to sort of like fill out this heel area and then I'm going to be filling this area with some cork mixed up with glue so I'll be putting a bit of sort of cork and glue in this area just to hold this shank and stop it moving around so I filled in around the shank with the cork and glue just to embed fat and put in some strengthening bits of hard leather around the sides you can get this um, cork filler you can make it yourself or you can actually buy it ready mixed so I mean I've got a can here which is in the UK from leather grindery cobbler's choice cork bottom filler I've now got this ready for the outer sole to be stuck on so what I've done I've put the little hard leather piece in here glued it down and also used the wooden pegs so that's the harder infill on the heel and then I've used some of the uh, cork granules mixed up with the glue to do the sort of softer footbed area so it's a bit more springy 
and then I've just sort of levered it all off with a bit of a file and what I'll be doing in the next video is attaching a lever outer sole so and then obviously in time I'll be putting a heel on and we're sort of getting there so that's what they both look like from the underside anyway, quite pleased where it's all going if you want to see what happens next as I say please do subscribe and I'll see you in the next video okay then bye bye